Green Chef, baby. Hi, it's Trixie. You know that I'm basically the Statue of Liberty official spokeswoman, the Suzanne Summers of Green Chef, because I love it and it completely transformed my life. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company, and it makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten free, or just looking to make more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. I'll tell you, one of my favorite things about Green Chef is my imagination is not great when it comes to food. So little things like using a ciabatta instead of normal bread, little things like using um, sun-dried tomatoes instead of tomatoes, these tiny tweaks that I learned from these Green Chef recipes, I take that with me into my normal cooking life and it's made me so good. Each week, choose from 80 plus flavor packed options, including new calorie smart recipes and wellness bundles. Mix and match meals and flavors from a variety of dietary differences like keto, Mediterranean, you know, anything plant based, quick and easy. I mean, you can even select quick and easy, which means you just want the fastest, easiest recipes. Plus, stock up on tasty extras in the green market, your one stop shop for high quality, thoughtfully curated goods. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 bald and use the code 60 bald to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 bald and use code 60 bald to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Chapter 44, Alyssa Edwards. Do you know this one? No. Oh! Chapter 44. Suitcase 40. full of dreams? No, this is oh. chapter 44. The newest uh, revol uh, revol revolving around the sun 44 times. Alyssa Edwards. Fierce. Every time Alyssa Edwards goes around the sun, the <sighs> world gets bigger and brighter. Better and brighter. Yes. Girl. She looks like cuntaliciousdiva.com. Cuntdeliciousdiva.com. She delivers. She delivers. You know, some they say don't meet your idols. Meet Alyssa. Meet her. Meet Alyssa, and you go, wow, the screen, the silver screen, didn't even come close to capturing it. Not a fraction. Not at all. Chapter 44. There's a few like that. BB's like that. BB's the a Harbinet. Harbinet. Mm. BB's a Harbinet. It's like, it's sort of like, oh, oh yes. you, you love pasta? Have you had homemade? Like, Meeting BB in person is like homemade BB. It's like, oh, bitch. Ravioli? Tagliatelle. Yeah. <laughs> get on a tour bus with Alyssa Edwards. I know? would rather not. Get, do it. I would rather get on a private jet with her. I want all the divas. I want Alyssa. I want BB. I want all the grand dames on a tour. So, and I want to be the tour director. I want to be the tour director. Who are they? Let's list them, though, because there's Alyssa, chapter 44. Yeah. Violet. Okay. Right. Girl, <laughs> we're going in. Let's go We got in. Violet. We got BB. We got Alyssa. Um, also... Trin, a Trace Lissette, a post-op transsexual with a Bangkok pussy. Her words, not mine. I swear to God. You're, don't shoot the messenger. No, no, shoot me. I'm the messenger. Shoot in me. <laughs> you know? Not on the tour bus. You know. <laughs> I have family staying with me. Talk about it. <laughs> it's great. Okay. Yeah, it's great. I love, I've never, I've never, never, never had real bona fide space for guests. Oh, you've got space. Having guests... When they have their own rooms, their own bathrooms, it's really no big deal. It's cunty. You're not like it's great having a dining room for, that can seat everyone. Like having guests when nobody has to sleep on a couch is like it's so nice. I don't know that life. I I didn't either. Because even here, when I had guests, it was a pullout, pull which out, is fine. My mom was always like, "Wow, this is a really comfortable pullout." The pullout technique works too when you're trying to get people not pregnant. Ask my mom. Pull out. Ask my mom. About pull out, pulling out? I have so much to talk to you about that. I feel I like I'm just going to throw up. Do it now. I'm ready. I'm listening. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to fucking Let's puke. Let's get it percolating. Some days one of us is like in. whatever and one of us whatever. And some days like the sun starts to peep out and I get a phone call from you and you go, I can't wait for the pod. I can't believe it's in five hours. <laughs> Ooh, and I have to wait to, you'll be like, I can't believe it's four hours till 11 when I have to talk to you. And one of us will always be ready to rock it. Woo! And I just feel edged. Shit. I feel edged, <laughs> intellectually edged. <laughs> like Verbally edged? A woman on the edge. <laughs> like for I'm a, real. Of a nervous breakthrough. For fucking real girl. <laughs> chapter 44. Go. <laughs> Not the chapter 44. <laughs> we haven't even talked about the Kardashian girl. Malibu. No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, I yeah. love your glam. It's not glam. It's natural. Is it organic? Yeah. Not the organic. Not the organic. Not the organic. Yeah. Why would you? So why would you? I totally have a skincare line, but it's 
I gave you, I mean, I was talking to my sister and I go, I literally said, do you know that girl from TikTok that, and she cut me off and goes, the one with the post-it notes on her fingers. Uh-huh. And I was like, how did you know I was going to say that? Mary, she's di- you know what, you know what is so diabolic about her? She does these brain integrations. She doesn't get paid a lot. I know, but how do you know? Well, I know I got people, I got Intel. I okay. got Intel. Celsius doesn't pay nobody. No, well, right. It's fine. But she looks like a Kardashian, talks like a Kardashian. She synthesizes the whole Kardashian drama into into sponsored videos. She distills so it. We, yeah, so we don't have to watch those whores. But I would, I would, but you know, they're Kim Kardashian, Mama, Goddess. Oh yeah, of course. But I, I even love, you know, I don't goddess. know how to say this um, in a nice say way. Say it sexy. Uh, even Kim and them, fifteen years ago, gorgeous. Like yeah. money and more surgery, et cetera. But don't forget, these women always look pretty, pretty amazing. They were, they're Armenian. Well, that helps. My, the driver today, Armenian. I mean, he said, you know, well, that doesn't make it. There are sense. a lot of beautiful Armenian men in this world, bitch. Oh there my, are a lot of, and let's count them. Chapter 44. You want to talk glossy, thick eyebrows. You want to oh. talk perfect skin, perfect eye color. Like bushwhacked booty holes though. Got a laser, laser, laser. Not for me. Oh. Not for me. For who? Chapter 44. For, I want chicken wire. Girl, I want not a the chicken wire. Not I the want scrubby. a scrub daddy. Not the, the not the Thanksgiving Express. Not the Thanksgiving <laughs> Express. Um, can I talk to you about PT? Part time work? A oh, physical therapy? Booty tank? No. <laughs> <laughs> my brother and my my brother's wife are PTs. Physical talk therapy. about it. So I think last time I was on the pod, I talked about my arm. Did I talk about my arm? Your arm? Your elbow? So if you're all watching at home, this arm straightens this much, and this arm wasn't. It was like this locked. Chapter forty four. Locked. I went to a PT and I kind of like thought it would help. Um, he helped me so much so fast in even one session that I almost started crying and hugged him. That was for my arm. Did you pay him though? No. Oh. I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Shit. Um, but I went to PT somebody for my TMJ because, I mean, a f- couple weeks ago, my mouth would barely open. That's how bad it's been. Oral sex no more. Yeah. I mean, I could maybe fillet a peanut m M&M and at this point. But you're allergic to peanuts. Well... It's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> Sacrifice you're willing to take. What if I talk to it's a risk I'm willing to take? Chapter 45. You think you have that fat fucking nut in me? I got that fat fucking nut in me. I want to have an allergic reaction to my lower colon, baby. Ooh. 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 Anaphylactic shock. Uh, 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 wait. Uh. <laughs> Who listens to this? Okay, Mama. So people who want to die. So something happened, and I don't want to. I don't want to get kicked out of my doctor, but I want to say what happened. I feel out like of your doctor. Well, I feel like there's a doctor-patient confidentiality. The Hippocratic oath. And I do think, as patients, we should have the freedom to say what happened at our doctor's appointment. But I don't want to like overly share people's practices. We just don't don't give the name. Trade secrets. Okay, great. We're gonna call them Doctor So and So. Doctor Doctor. No, Doctor Monica DeMonico. Yes. Okay. Easy to say. So I go in there and, you know, I'm telling him about my jaw being locked up. Wait, it's Dr. Moon. It's Dr. Moon. Okay, Perfect. Dr. Moon. So he's like, get up on the table. Super helpful. Um, works on my elbow a little bit as a, as a, as a little pro-am race for the cure. Like, like we weren't there to see my arm. And I mentioned my arm and he did a little bit on it, which was so welcome and nice. Oh, Not that we should expect healthcare providers to put in the extra other body parts. that No, you know. no, ma'am. But it was nice. So he starts working on the jaw. He's explaining to me. He's feeling all over my head. And he's basically like, okay, your jaw is supposed to be an even hinge that like, goes up and down. Right. One of your sides is recessed. So the whole thing is off kilter, which is why like when you chew and talk too much, it creates problems for you. So he gave me exercise to do. But Mary, you better believe he had to put on gloves, reach in my mouth with both thumbs. Both thumbs in my mouth. Both of and, those thumbs? And I'm just going to say... He wasn't unattractive. <gasps> Dr. Moon was hot. He was very uh, handsome and professional and nice and helpful. So thank you, doctor. Calming energy. I mean, for a doctor to put their fingers in your mouth and for you to not feel weird and embarrassed, I felt very relaxed, chill. But he goes, all right, we're going to get your jaw open today. And I was like, okay. And I kind of like didn't believe him. I'm getting hard. He goes, we're going to get your jaw opened up. Which any other context, <laughs> you know, but this is a medical environment. You know, this is a medical environment. You know, uh, by the way, would you have gagged if he took like an x-ray of my head and says, have you been sucking cock? Dick Is that what happened? Cock? Yeah. So he gets both thumbs, both thumbs are up inside my mouth and he goes, you can bite on my thumbs. So I put pressure on the thumbs and then he uses the, the pointy part of his thumbs to start pushing into the soft tissue, my hinge joint. 
And he's looking out into space because people who do body work, they almost look away from your body to like visualize your skeleton while they're uh-huh. doing it. Mm-hmm. Massage people sometimes like look, look out into space while they do it. Yeah. And it's a little horny, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but it wasn't too horny, but I was thinking like, uh-huh. wow, this is intimate. Uh-huh. Somebody's thumbs in your mouth is intimate. Uh-huh. Not in a sex way. No. So I don't want to get kicked on my doctor. No, don't do it. I, I Dr. Was Moon is up there in, in orbit. Right. I think it's okay to acknowledge that in other pretenses, this could be the beginning of porn, but this currently is well, doctor. I watched a porn that and that started like this. Right. So then he's pushing the thumbs and he's pushing the thumbs into the soft tissue and basically prying my jaw open. And he's taking breaks and he's going, are you okay? Are you okay? And he's prying, prying, prying. The terrifier? Pretty much. And he's like, your jaw will shift one way really easy. And the other way, it's so locked up. I can't even push it the other way. I mean, it's so bad. But he got it open a few more millimeters and I was able to eat this week and chew with like no clicking and popping and no major pain. And I'm seeing him again tomorrow and I'm so thrilled. I was like, do you think we'll be able to, after a few visits, do you think we'll be able to get it open? He was like, oh yeah. He, Mama, which was Dr. so comforting Mama, for Dr. Dr. Rebel, like, oh, Re- yeah. Rebel Moon, Dr. Rebel Moon. Yeah. But you know, Let's in other contexts, beautiful doctor, thumbs in my mouth, eye contact saying, we're going to open it up. I'm like, oh my God. I watched a pornographic film this morn. That involved a man putting his fingers in another man's mouth. And you know what happened. S-E-X. Thank you. Doctor um, of dental surgery. But I was just so grateful. I mean, to have to go to a doctor. You know, so many times you and I have talked about going to doctors and leaving with no information and no help. Uh, how like, about leaving with a titanium hip? To go, <laughs> done by a robot through a computer. Hello. Well, I was talking to somebody recently who's getting a surgery. And I said, you know, my friend, Don't got, go to my friend got a hip replacement. Don't go to Snibby, baby. Go to Mexico. I said, my friend got a hip replacement. And I think her only regret is not doing it sooner. And my friend goes, well, I had a replacement nine years ago and it still hurts. And I went, okay, blue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay Miss blue. <laughs> I was like, damn, not that, not the nine uh, years, <laughs> not the nine years ago. Surgery. Yeah. I just was like, well, fuck. Not the bum hip. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She says, oh my gosh, court. Oh yeah. Chloe does. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Not the bum hip. Yeah. Do you know, I have so much to talk to you about. I can't I'm listening. I'm can't listening. Breathe. J'écoute. Green chef, baby. Hi, it's Trixie. You know that I'm basically the Statue of Liberty official spokeswoman, the Suzanne Summers of Green Chef, because I love it and it completely transformed my life. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company, and it makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to make more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. I'll tell you, one of my favorite things about Green Chef is... My imagination is not great when it comes to food. So little things like using ciabatta instead of normal bread, little things like using um, sun-dried tomatoes instead of tomatoes, these tiny tweaks that I learned from these Green Chef recipes, I take that with me into my normal cooking life and it's made me so good. Each week, choose from 80 plus flavor packed options, including new calorie smart recipes and wellness bundles. There's so much variety, even though I'm vegetarian, so I don't really order meals with chicken or beef or whatever. I almost never get the same meal twice. And when I do, I loved that recipe and it's been long enough that I'm thrilled to make it again. Mix and match meals and flavors from a variety of dietary differences like keto, Mediterranean, you know, anything, plant-based, quick and easy. I mean, you can even select quick and easy, which means you just want the fastest, easiest recipes. But I'll tell you, even the hardest ones were not difficult. Take back time in the kitchen with dinner in 30 minutes and lunch in 10, for real. I have never, even the 30 minute meals, I don't think I've ever cooked longer than 25 minutes ever. Even if I've messed up, like I never take longer than 30 minutes. Plus stock up on tasty extras in the green market. Your one-stop shop for high quality, thoughtfully curated goods. Choose from 23 options, including grab-and-go breakfast, brunch kits, 10 minute lunches, ready to eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. Sometimes I get forced into making something that I would have Do you believe I would have opened a cookbook and said, yes, I'd like to make harissa roasted carrots. I don't even know what harissa is. So for me, with a very limited food experience and honestly like a limited palate, for me to bake and make like a harissa roasted carrot, I was like, this is amazing. And I would have absolutely never known that I love this. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 bald and use the code 60 bald to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 bald and use code 60 bald to get 60% off plus 20% 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. 
We here at The Bald and the Beautiful value the importance of taking care of your physical and mental health, but also your sexual health. That's why we've partnered with Lalo to introduce you to the Soraya Beads Anal Beads Massager, a one-of-a-kind pleasure device crafted especially for those who are venturing into the world of anal play exploration. Dive into a magical realm of cascading pleasure with their innovative design, offering four beads sculpted in size for a gentle start in a satisfying progression. A journey of pleasure from the smallest to the largest bead tailored for both beginners and experienced users. Let me tell you something. When I put these beads up my little booty hole, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. The size differential was magnanimous and the pleasure quotient was off the charts. Explore the power of bow motion technology, providing vibrations that resonate inside you one bead after another. Soraya beads offer a staggering total of eight modes to discover and explore and live your best life in the bedroom and beyond. This Valentine's Day, celebrate love by reconnecting with yourself or your partner. Explore exclusive discounts at laylo.com slash valentines dash day. Act fast to also receive a special gift. All purchases above $189 come with a free lipstick vibrator. Elevate your pleasure journey with Soraya Beads. Order now at laylo.com and use code BALL10 for an additional 10% off as this is a stackable discount for all products. Pleasure awaits with Lalo. Do you know about what's going on in the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Not a, not a thing. I don't do, wanna, did the, does, uh, I won't dive in. Does I, the girl do them too? No, she does Kardashians. I won't deep dive because I consider each one of those women friends after filming with them. Well, They're all nice and we sweet. We can't drag them through the mud then. We're not going to drag them. Oh. But a very unique situation happened that I want your perspective on. Talk about it. So um, it's a cast of women. There's a new gal this season. Mormons? Uh, some are Mormons. Some are ex-Mormons. Some are practicing Mormons. It's like a mix. That's a fucking fierce mix. A mix. That's a mixed nut variety. It's part of what makes Salt Lake City so intense is some of them are Mormons, some of them aren't, some of them used to be Mormons, some of them are maybe blurring the lines and, you know. Let me stop you right here for a moment. Let me talk to you a little bit about Mormonism. It's crazy. Continue. Yeah, as they all are, but Mormonism is really on a special level. Mormonism, Scientology, two sides of the same coin. Well, not joking, not well, I joking. I told you about them telling that they t the Mormon women get told their secret name through a curtain. Habibi, Habibi. Exactly. Habibi. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> apparently what occurred, and I watched this because, you know, I don't really watch The Housewives, but David watches about 12 hours a day of Bravo. So I catch it <laughs> in the morning. I catch, I get involved. Whether you like it or not, when someone's watching this you're stuff complicit. in your house, you get involved. You're complicit. <laughs> I was leading the witness. I was I was led by the witness. Um, what happened was one of the new cast members who I filmed with this year and everybody was so nice Mary? and normal. No, it was um, a friend of Mary Cosby. She's a friend of. Gotcha. Friend of um, Dorothy? Or friend she used of... to be on the show, but now she's a friend of, which is what happens when they don't want to do it anymore, but they'll still do guest spots. Gotcha. So Guest spots, tip spots. Tip and wigs. Tip and wigs. Tip toe wigs. <laughs> <laughs> what about a wig company we just sell tip and wigs? So like, not that good. Tipping out with bobby pins. <laughs> <laughs> Nodding out with bobby pins. <laughs> so one of the women, she signed on as a housewife this year okay. and they filmed a whole season with her. And by the end of the season, they found out that she was one of the owners and operators of a Real Housewives fan account. What? She had owned, she had been one of the original posters Swim and fan. owners of like, let's say there was like an RDR, RDR super fan rumor like, website. Like Lee Dawson, for example. Yes. Okay. She was posting, she was one of those people who ran that account. Trolling. And they found out, the other women found out. And the other women were like, so you run this account that calls us fat or calls us ugly or like, and you've been doing it since before you on the show. I'm starving. Feed me. Feed me. I'm starving. And it really created a major rift. And it made me think like in Drag Race world, if you were on a season of Drag Race and you found out there was a girl the whole time leaking information about us or starting and perpetuating rumors about us or like running, a, would you be mad? No, I'd say that's chapter 44, baby. Would you kind of like be like, girl, whatever, that's your little hobby? Or would you be like, I'd say, I don't trust you? I'd say, well, that part, of course, but I, I, I don't think I would really involve myself with that person. I would no longer be involved. Yeah. Because my thing is also like, well, didn't everybody want to be on TV? Like well, all it, of you, all of you did this because you, you saw Housewives at some point. Yes. And then Housewives came to your city and you said, yep. sure. But see, my issue is, um, why would you, uh, my issue is with that person, not a character, not a character assassination. I'd be like, well, this is the way that person chooses to spend their time. I don't agree with it. I don't necessarily like it, but I'm going to keep doing me. Miley. Right. Like what? Well, <laughs> Like, what would you do if you found out I ran a, a, a like a Trixie and Katya fan site? I'd be like, where do you find the time? That's impressive. 
Yeah. I'd be like, where do you, do you not sleep? That's fierce. I just, I have no opinion one way or the other. I just thought it was really. It's cunty. If you found out after a whole season of something like Housewives 2, where it's really about your, people talk about your family, your body, your face, your career, your money. It happens on Drag Race, girl. It it's absolutely gotta. does. Yes, it does. I mean, I haven't been watching Drag Race. I'm not, not because I'm not gay or don't like it, but just because. I don't have, I, I do it at the time. I don't know why I'm not watching it, but I- It's, girl, it's off the chain this season. Well, Plain Jane gets me, me together. Miss, plain Jane gets plain me together. Plain Jane gets the girls together whether they want to hear it or She's not. She's like, so I noticed you're really ugly. Plain Jane literally is like, hey girl, I know, I know that you haven't spoken to me and this is completely unprovoked. You're not on the same level as the yeah. rest of us. And, and Plain Jane is fierce. Sorry to say, I'll look into this camera. She is fierce. Plain Jane, not because she's from Boston, not because she's of Russian descent. Plain Jane is fierce because she's fierce. Boop, boop, be doop. And you and I are always like, where did this rule come from that drag queens have to be nice? It's not the Miss America pageant. Honey, I, was on, I saw a clip of myself on Hey Queen the first time saying, um, that is saying exactly that. When did it become de rigueur? I don't even know if that's the term for drag queens to be politicians, heads of state to conduct themselves with the behavior of a beauty influencer microscope. Drag queens are typically drug dealers, drug takers, prostitutes, hookers, thieves, um, or at the very, very most, grift selfish cunts who want a drink ticket. Thank you. And attention. Gay you want hell. Yeah. If you put on the sheen little bodysuit, you will get into the club for free. Yeah. You smell like pink sugar. You can, you can, maybe you can wiggle, maybe you can't, it doesn't matter, but you're like jumping you into in the cash industry using a fake name and you're ju- humping yeah. and grinding on bachelorettes on Saturday night at 7 PM. You're not a notary public. No dignity. Chapter 44. <laughs> yeah. And you're poor. What is chapter 44? And you're poor. Ch- Alyssa Edwards is 44 journey around oh, the sun. Oh, right, right, right. I'll show you the photo. Cause you will. She's fuck chapter 5150 honey, bitch. You will fucking gag at how beautiful you cannot take this. Woman. Nobody can. T- is it Mama, the one with the mirror? You can. Yes. I've seen Sweetie it. darling. Yes. You cannot take chapter 44. You cannot take her anywhere. I'm sorry. This is taking too long. It's right here. Yeah, the mirror. Oh, yeah, I seen it. Girl, I sent it to you. Oh, shit. Well, how do you not know? I'm going to read it. Because every time she posts one of these life posts, it's a chapter. Yeah. Cheers to chapter 44, a testament to the chapters of the life I have lived. I am grateful for all of your kind bidet messages and love. I have embarked on this journey around the sun. May I never forget to dream wide awake and unconditionally celebrate the reflections of life. Always and forever, Alyssa E. Cunt. Fierce in love, Tyra. It's cunt. She's cunt. Yeah. And she looks great. She looks incredible. Melissa Edwards. Melissa Joanne Elizabeth Edwards Etheridge. The third. The third. I was talking to Ganja Pussy. That's how she is in the phone. Mm. And so she's been on her um, hormonal journey, of course. Sure. And she's like thinking, I was like, I looked at some clips of her and, um, and I called her. I was like, mom of the body. The body. Yeah, she was she was more of a sapling build, and now she's a little more of a. She's yes. she's a curvaceous, cunty diva. Body it's like wow, pussy body. about to end this drought. Say it again. Yeah, yeah, it's fierce. She's always fierce. Well, she's always been fierce, but you know, and to see her publicly, and you know, from my little perch, like kind of uh, grow into a, a version of womanhood that she wants to, it's truly breathtaking because. I mean, she has all the skills. She's had all the skills from day one. Yeah. I love when I'm with the girls and I'm like, oh my God, your skin, what do you use? And they're like hormones. And I'm like, okay, but give me some information I can use. <laughs> yeah. I'm not willing to go to that length I for know. perfect skin. Well, I think like misery, I might take this advice at 50. If I don't have a husband, which I won't, I'll become the only transsexual. So you'll have to wipe out all the other ones. Is that what you're saying? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that's I'll a good point. I'll become the only. Yeah. <laughs> there can only be one. Like Highlander. No, you're going to go to some young, beautiful, content trans woman's house. You're going to pull out your arm, cut the skin off like Terminator 2 and pull out your robot arm. Yes. I watched that movie the other day. I sent you some clips. You did Terminator not, but it's okay. Terminator 2 is crazy. You did not, but it's okay. Yes, I, I took the video of the, the when the... You did not. Oh, it's what okay. did I send you? Total Recall. Quato lives. Get your ass to Mars. Let's go to Saturn, Doug. Do you think I'm gross if I would fuck Arnold? He's hot in those movies, right? He's hot in those movies. Speak on it. I would fuck. He's been one of my spank bang top five for the, my Gorgeous. whole life. The scene where he is about to cut off his robot arm and he pulls up his shirt, the bicep. The every, he's not a bad looking guy. He's a great comedic actor. You have to watch. You've got to watch his Netflix documentary. The three episode. Truly fucking fascinating. Well, did you see the new Term- Terminator? A Genesis? The one with him in it again. No, I didn't like it. But wait, wait. I gotta, I Does just, that mean you didn't see I forget, it? Before I forget, Reg Park. You know, Reg Park, I've been posting about Reg Park. He was Arnold's idol from the 50, 1958 at Hercules. Mm-hmm. Reg Park is the hunk of all hunks. If you saw this man on the street, 
you would crumble because mm-hmm. he makes Arnold look like a fucking dog. Work. Reg Park, South African, I believe, or uh, British, British. Love the name Reg. Reg, Reg, it was Reg the Leg, his, his nickname. Mama, this motherfucker climbed up on top of me. The littlest dick you ever seen in your motherfucker. No, I'm just kidding. He is so hot. I, I've never seen in my life ever, ever a hunk more hunky than this man. So Arnold saw him in Hercules and said, that's what I want and I'm going to surpass it. And he did. Wow. I believe Arnold, I don't know why I know this. I believe he made popular the um, ladder um, reps. Did he? Yes. Less reps. And then um, I, I think he did a lot of reps at less weight. And then the next set he would do more, less reps, more weight. Oh, less that's, reps, more that's, weight. It's some, it was like a ladder. Oh, okay. Interesting. I mean, he revolutionized bodybuilding. Yeah. He's, he did the whole book, the Bible book. His, there was a Bible of bodybuilding written by him. And he won so many competitions. It, his, his, he had a brother who was gay and he died in a drunk driving accident. He, he has so, there's so many incredible things about his life. <sighs> now he pre- These aren't even good drivers sober. Thank you. You tell, know, tell it, t- thank you, tell it, thank you. Maria Shriver, dog, but uh, he ma- married into the Kennedy family and it, it's really interesting to see that, you know, he sired a, a, a child with that maid. Um, oh. Yeah, fierce, but he, you know, he fucked around a lot. I mean, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I, you know, <clears throat> um, I was watching it with David, we were talking about it with David's mom and she was like, Arnold, really? And I was like, maybe gay guys like him and do the straight girls like him too? No, right? Everybody loves him. They did? Because I think he's handsome. True lies? Yeah. He's beautiful. He's also- a, When I was a kid, I just had never seen a man like that. And I was like, oh my God. Mama, he we factored into our lives very young because my, my father and my brother and my, my uncle Tom was a bodybuilder at the, in the 80s. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was always in the mix. Yeah. Um, Terminator. Um, pr- uh, Predator. Total Recall. Yeah, I mean- Kindergarten Cop. Especially in True Lies, it's not like um, Terminator where it's like- Almost like uh, I'll be back. Yeah, three words. In True Lies, he's uh, just just hot. It's not like novelty. Yes. He's just a handsome man. And what about the tango with Jamie Lee Curtis? Girl, girl. She goes from housewife to bombshell in one whop. She doesn't even get her hair changed. Well, nothing gags me more. If anybody has not seen this, there's a scene in True Lies where she's going to do this mission, and she has on this crazy frilly dress with glasses and her hair, and she Rip. stops and looks in the mirror in a hotel, and she takes the glasses off. Puts on lipstick, pushes her titties up. She rips mm-hmm. the frilly sleeves off and then takes a vase, pours out water, slicks her Wet. hair back. The princess switch. Yeah. Which, if I ever start getting surgeries, I want to get enough that that's all I need to do to get in drag. How do I, what's my, my morning routine? Rip off half my outfit and put some water in from in a my vase. Hair? <laughs> no kidding. Well, well that's I, drag race. Girl. That's drag race. That's, the girl, that's when the girls can't sell on drag race. Yeah. That's what they do to an outfit. Yeah. Girl, you got to watch this season. It is off the chain. And I, I, I'll get I'm to it. I'm doing pit stop, so I obviously have a unfair advantage. I'll watch you do the pit stop. I'll watch you do the pit stop. You look great on the pit stop, by the way. I got to show you something. Thank you. <laughs> this person called Queen of Flips, whose name is Maya Iman LePage. This week, she uh, it was a share competition, and she did a share impression. Would you like to hear it? I would. I'm going to show you Reg Park, too. Are you ready to hear Maya? I'm ready. Let's go for it. Can you do a share impersonation? Let me see it. I'm oh, we right. saw that. Braces, braces. <laughs> the meme that'll live forever. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah, do it this time, but lick your hair back. I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. So we're trolling. What share so we're is that? trolling. We're doing Troll Tina. And that's coming from me. That's coming from my share, which is used to be the worst. Mama, but now I'm the second worst. Look at this motherfucker. Girl. Mama, look at this motherfucker. Girl. That's Reg Park, bitch. Girl. Honey. Girl. You think that's the hunkiest man I've ever seen? It's true. Girl. That's Reg fucking Park, bitch. Sweetie darling. Sweetie darling tootsie honey baby. He looks like a circuit DJ. He would be headlining at circuit party. Um, Which circuit party would that be? Wait, wait, wait. The circuit city party. Wow. Beautiful. Travelocity, this is Susan. Girl. (laughs) Beautiful. Mama, when I tell you that I've downloaded this movie on YouTube, uh, Hercules, and then Hercules in the Haunted Mansion or whatever, Two of them, and it yanked and pulled the taffy. So Queen fierce. of Faps. Queen of Queen of it's Faps. It's Faptina Bestie. Faptina. Ah! <laughs> and it's it's none of it. It's all they're all practical. There's 1958. This movie Hercules. Yeah. 1958. The sets are incredible. Is that before steroids? Oh no. But um, no. Oh. But but get this though. They pray. They they're fighting Uranus. Uranus. They're fighting Uranus. The planet. No, the god. Uranus. The, the amount of times Uranus comes into play. 
dialogue wise well, is not lost on me because I would love him to fight my anus. I want my anus to come into play. Girl, and it's all, it's Hercules, so it's gay, uh, homoerotic, Greek. This, the mythology of it is so homoerotic, I can't even stand it. It's People, so fap worthy. Wherever you can find your joy in life, because let me tell you, I it's peachy you, too. Lately, peachy. I feel like, I, lately, I feel like I woke up from a dream and had a reality check that. Really? Nothing's chapter that good. Chapter 44. Oh, mama, I, I beg to differ at 41 years of chapter 41. I feel like you've always been so. Stupid, in touch hot, with how sexy. how not good things are, and I've always been like, but they are. But lately, I feel more like, no, they're not. And you're right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You got to be more specific. I don't understand. That's it. <laughs> Chapter forty one. The flip is the no, script but is flipped. I, I, I've always been more of like a a realist, but like very yeah. optimistic realist. Yeah, like yeah, life yeah, is yeah. life is whatever. Mama, and Slip lately I'm just like chocolates. lately I'm just like. Take a yeah. Give me a break. <sighs> Where's the Kit Kat? Where's the Snickers? Lately, I am just like if if. What in the moment, if it, if it's right to you, do that. Are you feeling like Peggy Lee? Is that all there is? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Is that when my house burned down? When my house when my house burned down, I wondered, is that all there is to a fire? Fierce love. Let's take a break. Okay. Today's episode is brought to you by Drive Away Dolls, a new comedy from Focus Features, written by Ethan Cohen and Trisha Cook. Starring Margaret Qualley, Geraldine Viswanathan, and Beanie Feldstein. Drive Away Dolls is only in theaters February 23rd. Director writer Ethan Cohen and writer Trisha Cook team up for this comedy caper that follows Jamie, played by Margaret Qualley, a free spirit bemoaning yet another breakup with a girlfriend, and her demure friend Marion, played by Geraldine Viswanathan, who desperately needs to loosen up. In search of a fresh start, the two embark on a wild road trip to Tallahassee. Things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way. Buckle up and strap in for a road trip you won't forget. Drive Away Dolls is only in theaters February 23rd. Visit drivewaydollsmovie.com to get tickets now. Something uplifting. People's houses burning down. Mine did when I was growing up. My sister dropped a candle on the bed and the whole upstairs went on fire and we lost all our bedrooms. My parents and I and my brother and sister had to sleep in the basement for two weeks. Have you told me this before? Probably, but years ago. Your house burned down? The whole top floor. All our bedrooms. All the of fire our department bedroom. came and everything. Yeah, I was- Oh my, my God, f- mom, dad, brother, sister, gone. gone. Look, <laughs> here's the company fire department and police policy. Corporate Aaron. It all comes back Lisa to Lisa Beasley. Aaron. Lisa Beasley. So did you, was it at night? It was at night. I, this is going to sound morbid. My only, my deepest, um, was I filled with relief or regret? Right. Relief that none of my family members were- Perished. Regret that I was not there. That I was at my friend Kristen's house, the same woman who fucked my, the, this guy that I introduced her to that I was in love with, stole her from me, stole him from me. He was straight, but he, I get, he let me give him a blowjob. <gasps> um, T with braces. Hello. Um, and I was at her fucking crazy house while my, the, my sister dropped a candle on the bed. It went up in flames. The whole upstairs was Blackened and charred. Not the house in flames. Not the, not the charred house. Not the charred third floor. <laughs> um, yes. And then I, the, the fire department was there. It was a big neighborhood disaster. And I came home and I was like, well. The one cool thing thanks, finally Kristen. happened. Yeah. Thanks, Kristen. I blame it on her. I wish you would have been there. That would have been so fun for you. It would have been fun. I would have been terrified because my sister is traumatized. That's traumatizing. That's actual trauma. That's actual trauma. So she what? Like. Do you know what's her? Did she tell you like with the current the events? Yeah, what yeah, yeah, happened? Yeah. She dropped a candle on the bed, and the bed went up like gangbusters. And she didn't have a fire extinguisher. She flipped. She was like twelve. It was absolutely terrifying, terrifying. And then the guilt. Was she home alone? No, everybody was home. So she just starts screaming, screaming, and then it got out of control. There's nothing you can do when the whole room is up in flames. And then it went into the fire department had to smash through my this could have been window. like her X Men origin story. I know. She like well, it controls is. the flames and it's all okay. But it is. But she became a veterinary pathologist instead of a fire breather or whatever. What a waste. I know. So stupid. And a master's of public health. What a loser. What a fucking loser. Flop. She needs to get on your level. I mean, yeah. She, she had a child who sings himself to sleep at night. Loser. Get over yourself. She texted me. Owen was in the bed alone singing "Ba Ba Black Sheep." Have you any will to see? He sings himself to sleep. The angel sings himself to sleep. Well, you know, that's what the kids used to do. Now that, you know. Oh, this now, woke. Well, now, no, now that's like iPad children. Mama, nary an iPad. We were juggling scarves. Honey. We were playing with trains. We were putting on chapstick. I used to take cherry chap chapstick and put it on my wrist and pretend it was perfume. Chap that was my up. life. Swatch it. Chap it. The original Love swatch. It. 
Yeah. Hey guys, I didn't have a camera yet, and YouTube had never invented, but I was doing beauty videos yeah. with chapstick. You're also co- accosting people outside for with perfume. Definitely. Like, definitely. Hi, I'm from Macy's. What's that? Doesn't matter. Ch-ch-ch. David had a similar thing. This morning, I woke up and went to go get dressed, and I heard him in the shower, and he's showering, blah 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 blah, and I'm putting on my clothes, and I hear. Why is he rubbing the skin on? No, I hear. Oh. Something's bound to begin. It's gonna yeah. happen. He started singing maybe this time in the shower by himself. Oh, it's an intense thing to sing the first thing in the morning in the shower. Let me do you one better. I sang it. I lip synced it at Mass Art while people ripped my prom dress off on stage. I as love a, art. As a sec- oh, yeah. Have, have I you, love my art. My name is Sasha Valor. Have you heard about art? <laughs> that sounds like Cher. Wait, That's Queen of Flip Cher. Wait, hold on. I'll do it with Flip. Art? Not the art. Not the art. Not the drag queen doing art. Girl, what have we been up to? Dragula. We're going to Mexico this week. Vamos a Mexico. Si, claro que si. We're going to Mexico. I, you know, I've never been, I've never worked in Mexico in my life. But Mexico is going to work you out. Have you worked in Mexico? I have. Where? Mexico City. What's the vibe? I don't know. I was on 150 milligrams of edible. Then our manager found me masturbating in a bathroom in the dark. It's gonna happen. Can we happen take another break? Sometime. Two minutes later. <laughs> Maybe this time I'll win. Oh, everybody can, loves a winner. Can we talk about Eileen? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Come on, Eileen. Annie, you know, I'm watching this movie. Hathaway. I'm watching this movie because David turned it on, and I hate when David does this. He goes, he puts on a movie, and I go, "What is this movie?" He goes, "It's a film." And I go, <laughs> "I go, <laughs> and I go, <laughs> what, what, what is it called?" He's like, "You'll see." He won't ever tell me what's on, so I because he he wants me to. He wants to try to suck me into watching good movies. He should movies. say he's a soap opera then. Because it's not Uncle Buck. I'm not interested. Hello. So I'm like stuck Thank there you. watching it. And as soon as it got cooking, I went, you know who's going to love this? <laughs> who insufferable. As soon as it started to get crazy, I was like, you know who's going to fucking love this? Katya. And then I text you, you got to watch Eileen. See, I love Otessa Maffe. I don't know how to say her name. I read the book of my year of rest and relaxation, which is cuntaliciousdiva.com. Um, on, because she's, I believe that she, so she did also this a fabulous book called Lapvona. I don't know how to say it. Lavona, L-A-P-V-O-N-A. Fabulous, incredible, disgusting, mm-hmm. medieval tale. And she's so good at drawing in, in um, uh, characters that are so unlikable, but are so, you, so incompelling. But I hadn't read this one. I bought the book and hadn't read it. And when Annie Hathaway uh, barged into that frame, I said, okay. Yeah, so- okay. Can I, I don't care about spoiler alerts. This isn't I like to watch. I don't care if I ruin the whole movie for these people listening. Skip ahead. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Do you know about that? No. When Denise Richards was on Real Housewives, she was saying she wanted the filming to stop. And she was saying, blah, 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 because if you mention production, they cut it out. It's like Nike, Nike, Nike. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kathy Griffin says, if you're ever saying something you don't want them to use, you start singing the Beatles. You sing a song they can't clear financially. Come on, Eileen, won't you yeah, say that? that so so Anne Hathaway it. comes in, and of course, can I just say, I'm not like a, a, a big brain movie person. So oftentimes, like these sort of, um, these sort of- You're saying you got lowbrow taste? Cl- yes. Okay. These sort of cloying, I don't know if that's the right word, like uh, Oscar bait movies well, yeah. tend to grate me. Uh, yeah, I, know, I understand They tend that. to make me look around- it was like the Saltburn experience where after I, I looked around and went, is this what all you faggots have been tweeting about? I know. Have y'all seen Uncle Buck? Like, so. <laughs> Where's the entertainment? Yeah. John what, Candy. How are you going to make this funny? Thank you. So the movie kicks off and it's kind of slow. Massachusetts accents are crazy. As you know. It's kind of slow. My ear was not. not slow, Mary. She shoved snow in her pussy. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. That's, my, that's, ear, yeah. my ears can't understand that mass accent. It's just wild. Well, I wasn't in Massachusetts in jail in the 50s, but. But it gives me P Town Towny level accent where I'm like, tea, whoa, T, T, like your bra. Your jo- wait, judge is your, your wait. If your father judge is in the bathroom with a horse, that. that's fucking yeah. that's, oh, it's bizarre. So Anne Hathaway comes in, and of course you're like, okay, there's this woman. She's kind of um, she's sex starved, but obviously has no social life, has no sex life, has no romantic life. And then Anne Hathaway comes in, who's like effortless, world Bob, weary, world smoking weary. indoors. Like, well, honey, stick with. It's very like stick with me, kid. Yeah. And at first you're like, something lesbian gonna happen? And then something that lesbian does gonna happen? Honey, and like, I'm watching, I'm I'm almost, um, what do you call it? Uh, ODing? Hard O. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so I'm on the couch. I'm sort of, I'm I'm bottom, I'm flatlining. Yep. I'm sort of like, this movie just went over my head. Okay. I'm Miss Lowbrow. I'm here with my warm Laffy Taffy in my left hand <laughs> and my iPhone in my right hand being like, wake me up when the credits, oh, you know, it's just too shit. weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too weird for me. But again, I like trash. 
Uh, yes, yes. No, 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 yeah, you know. yeah. Uncle Buck is not trash though. And then Miss, uh, when Miss Anne Hathaway goes, can I confide in you? I go, okay, something's, go- something's going off. Something's going off. And she goes, can I confide in you? And she admits to having the kid's mother tied up in the basement. Yeah. I go, holy shit. Yeah. And newsflash, she works with troubled kids and she's trying to get the mom to confess to not only knowing about her husband fucking her son, but facilitating it. Yeah. And the woman is like, when I realized he, I was getting infections in my pussy, and then I realized it's because he was doing our son up the butt and then fucking my pussy with the shit on the dick. Mm-hmm. Mary, it was. I, I, let's, I hope I you all lost your lunch. Wonder. I hope you're not eating out there. I. It was sort of like um, perked up isn't the word. I sort of was Chumped like, up. what's this? Chumped what's up. this? Oh. There's white things in the air. I was suddenly like, oh, this movie's going off. <laughs> Snow. Yes. <laughs> I crossed both legs. Into the woods. <laughs> I crossed this. Then I crossed this leg. You're like, yeah. I let put, me confide in you, Miss Hathaway. <laughs> yes. I put on my little crocheted socks on my beret and I leaned in. I said, what is going on? Glasses on top of your glasses. The monologue the mom gives during that, I was like, this is acting. That was acting. This is Miss Acting. Yeah. That was inside the actor's And studio. Hathaway's doing Miss Acting. I feel yeah. bad not knowing the actress who plays Eileen. Okay. She was doing Miss Acting. She was Miss Acting. I, that, I didn't love the way it ended. I hate weird French novel, just abrupt endings. And the next morning, though, I was going for my walk, and I was like, "I liked that movie." Yeah, I did too. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was I, I, I was, um, you know, the the shock of that monologue and what it what the it, shock because I can. So this is a novel, right? I mean, that is clear from the the descriptions because you have to play them. Oh, this sounds so. It's fucking very much juvenile. a novel. So and so so juvenile. Like it was a tell not show moment. Yeah, and in the obviously novels are tell not show, but then you create the movie in your head. I I'm like now I'm going to read this fucking book because I'm going to be more haunted and more disgusted and more terrified by all the things that I'm going to have to imagine from the words. Yes, you know, I mean, and the parts that are shocking, such as that monologue, it wasn't played for shock. It was played for gravitas. Real. Yeah. It was played for yeah. if it's the early '60s. Yeah. First of all, divorce for women. Women barely could work at that point. Also, her, Eileen's dad was pushed up in the sister. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then she got out. And you know, it's a little like the Gypsy Rose thing where I've been in abusive situations. I understand how you get horse blinders to reality. Yeah. We watch the movie and you go, Eileen could leave at any time. But that's not how it feels not, when you're in abusive, dependent situations. That's not how it works either. And so obviously in this film, it gets extreme. The way she deals with it, it's extreme. Yeah. But at the end, I was like, Okay, bitch. I see you, Eileen. Yeah. Eileen Dover. I was like, the credits came down and I was like Dawson's Creek, like, do, 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 do. I was like- You were Katie Holmes marrying Tom Cruise. No, but when it <laughs> ended, it ended too abruptly for me and yeah. there wasn't a bow on it. And I was waiting for a moment yeah. where she looked back at the camera, like the end of Monster and was like, what do you think? Or something <laughs> like, I was waiting for something. Annie Hathaway takes off her blonde wig. is like, that's right. I'm Catwoman. I knew you were going to love this Annie Hathaway. <laughs> I'm a- it's maybe my favorite Anne Hathaway role, to be honest. Okay. Fierce. Well, I loved it. Annie. Annie Banani is, Annie Banani is, she's Miss Actress. She's Miss Actrina. She's, 47 million followers on Instagram. Did you, have you, okay. I'm going to have, the, the film she's about to, to drop on this world with Jessica Chastain. Do you think gay people are going to survive that? What movie? I, me thinks not. Argyle? No. Oh. The, the, the one about um, the son, the, it's, um, what it's called? Mother's Instinct. Honey, you watched- Tracy looked it up right away knowing you would know the name. You, Honey, you watch this trailer and you will say, my gay, my gay personhood is about to be evaporated and vaporized by the country that's about to take place on screen. Uh-huh. Every gay person's going to be like, Arr! and die. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. There'll be no more gay people. Do you know about headphone dents? People who stream for a living through their teens, their heads are starting to get dented from wearing headphones and they have a, they have a flat here. Bulb here, and then they indent here. The, the phone neck, and then the um, arthritis in their thumbs. Girl, but the 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 dent. They take the headphones off, and the skull is still like, nope, we're here. Love ASMR. Um, Miss Miss um, what do you call it? Fontanelle. Not, not full, Fontanelle. Fontanelle. Fontanelle Dupree. Fontanelle Dupree of She's the legendary in. house of headphones. Girl, sometimes we are need to joking? experiment with earbuds. Switch. Up, I'm just saying, switch up the headphones. Also, oh, these are very soft and lovely, and they're not making a dent on my 41 year old brain. Probably because I'm. But 41. if you're wearing it when you're young, while your head is developing, who's wearing develop? Who's kids, wearing it? Kids, kids literally have iPhones at two now. Girl. But iPhones, you. Oh my god, you're right, girl. Oh my god, girl. My pussy. I put a Fitbit in the in my pussy, so when the baby comes out, it wears it as a belt. Fierce. <laughs> the steps you know. are counted from the jump. 
Slap now, one step. What do you think of those little carts that drive around the Amazon delivery carts, the robots? You're not ready for what I think about that. Can, no, we need to. Are you prepared for me? Have to talk you ever about, received a package from them? Are you? Do you really want to know my opinion? No, I about do. This? Because the, here's what I'll say: some bullshit piece of shit motherfucker went to the trouble of inventing a robot traveling food technology while we have millions of homeless people in this town. I take umbrage with that. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Robots that drive food around to people with a lot of money and yet starving people, they have to jump over starving people in the street. That's oh. disgusting to me. It's they despicable. They also have names. They have names like the cart will drive the other yesterday. yesterday I was it's on my, Molly. Oh, I was on my walk and the Here's cart Molly. stopped and blinked at me and it said Marnie on it. And I was like, okay, Miss Marnie. Marnie from Girls. I guess. Allison Williams. I've never seen Girls. So those, and someone was telling me that people remote control those carts. I was like, What? Uh, girl, I don't know. What not, it's just. Is, is girls lesbian? No. Lesbian things happen? No, it's just girly stuff. Girly stuffs. Being girls in New York, rich and white. But wait, wait, wait. Sorry to, but sorry to go on a little tirade, but I, the, the, the robotic technology that is being developed and employed by people like Elon Musk, Tesla, is just so, to my, to my unknowledgeable, observant brain, asinine. Um, Black mirror. It's, not, it's like gray mirror. Mm. It's not even like, it doesn't have the, the, Coke the mirror. fierceness. Not even Coke. It's like a poop mirror, brown mirror. There's poopy stuffs in that mirror. Well, I just, I've never received a package from one of those. Do they go like, your food is here and you go outside and when you go up to it, it does it, it into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you go, chomp, chomp. You go, D- does it just open and you grab the food out of it? I don't know. I've never I've seen never it. I've never used one because- I've seen them driving around, but never seen them open. Same. So there could be some kind also, of nefarious plot. If you're a per- an unhoused person- Homeless. Looking just for say a homeless. meal. Say homeless. Can you can you crowbar it open? I doubt it. Can you rob Who's it? Who's got a crowbar? A lot of homeless folks I know are tired, cold, and maybe a little confused, and certainly not um, not looking to fight robots today. Not really. That, yeah. It's not the Terminator. It's not the yeah. Terminator. But okay, let's get back to something light. I I just I I think I I just I see them driving around, and I always go, oh, they must be testing that. But now there's so many going around. I'm like, they must be using that. Somebody's using it. And it's like the Boston Police Department with MIT technology that's robotic, um, like police uh, robots. It's fucking crazy, dude. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it because, I don't know, we should be like helping people with human beings. I don't know. Ugh. That's tough. Sad. It's sad. Well, let's keep it light on the pot okay, today. So let's talk about your drinking problem. <laughs> I don't have a drinking problem. Although, do you like beer? Certainly not. I have a I've dream of becoming a, a beer person. I've drunk a Guinness. You don't like it. I love Daphne Guinness, the heir to the Guinness fortune. Who doesn't? Of course. I mean, do you, do you have you seen her music videos? Heaven. Have you seen her music videos? David, directed by David Lush. No. I didn't know she did music. She did, and it's incredible. Oh, I've never seen it. She is unreal. The music videos are unreal. Unreal. Revelation. I'm going to look it up. It's two of them in particular I'm thinking of. They're, they'll knock your socks off. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I'm going to look her up. Yeah. Uh, David also has me watching a program with Laura Dern called Enlightened. Oh. She really eats. Oh. Laura Dern is so pretty. I know that we shouldn't. I feel like with actresses, we're not supposed to rec- rec- say that they're pretty. Why not? Because then we're like judging but someone's art by they how have. they look. No, but, but every time Laura comes on screen, I go, my God, she's pretty. Mom, God, she's, she's pretty. She's hunty. She's diva. That Enlightened series is Mike White. It's pitch perfect. I love Mike White. I love him too. He's love a, him. He's Mike White, one. we love you. We love you so much. Isn't he? Of course. So he knows about the girls maybe? Chuck and Buck like to suck and fuck. Mike, Mike, we love you. Michael. He's also bald and beautiful. Is he bald? No, he's got some hair. Oh, but God he's damn. pale as hell. He's, he's pasty. He's a pasty white bitch. Yeah, I love people with blonde eyelashes. It's a vibe. But they need brown mascara. But I, I love men with... Like white, I'll yellow buy, little buy. sticks grown out of their Il-Bonars. eyes. Il Bonars. Il Bonar. Listen, but Enlightened, you've got to get, have you, you seen, um, I mean, in, I rewatched Enlightened recently and all the, and devastating. Do, devastating. You, do you believe that a certain actress was recently denied her right to an Oscar nomination? Uh, Margot Robbie? No, and nobody has a right to an Oscar nomination. For Barbie? The, the, the popcorn movie? I don't understand why this should even be a, an Oscar discussion. We're talking about Oscar bait. Barbie? That's, I, and I, I a love- A toy movie? I love- What's next? Toy Story going to sweep the Oscars? 
That would make more sense to me, honestly. Is, is, is Herbie too fully loaded? Have you ever actually, the, the Golden Globes? You, before we before we go down, the, before we equate Barbie to Toy Story, okay? Because gorgeous of ours, cute. No, but but Toy Birds Story, of a Feather, Birds of a Feather, Chickadee, Toy Story, Chomps, Barbie Nibbles, oh. Toy Story, Chomps, Toy Story Three should have Oscars. Say it again. Toy Story Four is amazing, but Toy Story Three is. Um, kind, kind it's like diva. one of the best animated films I think there is. Bam, boom, boom. And I liked Barbie, but I guess the um, this the the absolute like neck crack of I can't believe it's I not was butter. Like, I can't believe it's not. And butter. I seen Barbie twice. I was like, I didn't feel best movie, best actress about it. No, I I liked it. I but mean, I didn't feel that way about it. I can't really give it like an, a good good evaluation as I have not yet seen all of the Oscar films in contention. But I certainly didn't cross my mind while I was in the theater thinking. This is going to sweep the Oscars. Because it's also so random. Who knows who's going to get a nomination and for what? It's the Academy that are that's voted on by people, human beings in Hollywood. Why do we think there's some kind of objective truth or, or, or and I'm still flummoxed. I never get to use that word. Yeah. We're like, why actors, uh, so they're millionaires, sometimes billionaires, so world famous, so gorgeous, so incredible, whatever wealth. And then they're genuinely, sincerely moved to tears when they do receive the support of a, a fraction of their peers. I'm like, what is so wrong with you? What is actually so fucking wrong with you? Nowadays, back in the day, it was a little different because there were tabloids. The people were real stars. The people were real stars, like Sigourney Weaver, Meryl Streep, Susan Sarandon way back in the day, even Lauren Bacall way back then. Pierce those were real. No, honestly, those are real stars. Cary Grant, real stars tabloids, mm -hmm. Hollywood. That meant something maybe, but now it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't yeah, mean shit. I never watched the Oscar movies, so nobody I guess I have anymore. no skin in the game. Oh no, nobody because, watches the Oscars anymore. I, I think guess, it was a... I guess I just thought, I thought of Barbie as really good. Or fun, fun. Good and fun. Yeah. And I honestly thought, that's not the type of movie that awards will ever take seriously. The same way they don't like horror, the same way they don't like comedy. Yeah. I was like, Killers of the Flower Moon should win an Oscar. Barbie's so good at what it does, but I didn't expect it to be Oscar-y. Yeah. I thought Oscar people would be like, no, that movie's too fun and commercial. You it's know? pink. I thought it'd be snooty. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised. I, I thought, well, yeah, it, the, the, the awards are too snooty for a fun movie like that. Of course. That's what I thought. Is Killers of the Flower Moon nominated? Lily Gladstone, I believe, received a Best Actor nomination, uh, Actress. Now, that movie clocking in at about 16 and a half hours, I watched it. Now, believe me, when I see a movie like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, when I see a movie like I, Tanya, I, I get up and you say, scream you Margot say, Robbie's name from the rooftops, say, yeah, and you, I say, give her the award. The statue is in her hand. But yeah. for Barbie, I thought, what a great movie that they did, probably knowing damn well, because it's a comedy and stuff, it won't get considered. Right. And maybe that's like me being closed-minded, but I thought- I think it's also Twitter. I think it's it's the it's the uh, brouhaha online that is really driving this discussion. I'm actually convinced that it has something to do with gaining buzz for the televised cast of the Oscars. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Because that's a dying audience. Because movies have global impact and they can be huge. Like the Barbie movie is a phenomenon, right? It's like Harry a Potter something. It's so yeah, big. It's crazy. But the the most talked about in most billboards doesn't 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 immediately blast open that door for instant awards. No. And I also think it's like. You can love it without feeling like it. It, it needs to have an award. It, if you love it, you love it. It's great. Yeah, I don't. Uncle you think, Buck. Do you think any of my Russian language music albums have awards? <laughs> Not a damn one of them. Do I listen to them ad nauseum nonstop? You sure better do. believe it. Last thing, the cursed. Not the curse series, which is also fabulous mm -hmm. with Nathan Fielder and Emma Star Starn. Emma Starn. Starn. Um, the cursed, a, a movie I believe twenty last year perhaps. Mama, there was no, there has not been a movie created for me specifically ever, ever, ever. Let me just paint a really quick picture. Back in the day, I think it's around in this, in the 19th century, 1800s, uh, a gypsy, a couple of Roma, okay, AKA gypsies, a community, um, in a, um, in a, live in a field, like in a kind of a village sense that something's happening. There's some, there's going to be some trouble. So we need to talk one, about Kevin. Yes. We need to talk about the white settlers, the English. Whatever. Okay. Um, the, the, a woman says, you need to prepare the thing. I sense something coming. The man molts down silver coins into a vampire grill. And then she puts it in a box, curses it with an incantation, and buries it. Soon after, love their, their land is, in, uh, is one to- um, I'm going to watch this. So please don't ruin all of it. I, I, won't, okay. I won't. I won't. Okay. I'll just give you the good part. So, so shortly thereafter, 
um, the surrounding, um, I believe they're English. English uh, colonizers say, this land is, well, we got to scare these people off the land. We'll just scare them off. Uh -huh. They'll go. And this long, wide shot of a, a scare, and then somebody gets shot. And then the whole village gets destroyed. <gasps> and then the guy who made the molten teeth gets his arms and legs chopped off. Straw stuffed into the stumps and <gasps> strung up like a scare scroll while the, while the woman who did the incantation gets buried alive. <gasps> and then revenge happens for the rest of the film. I love revenge things. It's... It was, I love, part of why I love Kill Bill. Oh, and um, do you ever see Last House on the left? Jennifer Lawrence. There's a little... Wait, is that the right movie? It's the that's the R A P E. The one, one with the rather gratuitous yeah, sexual assault scene. I don't like that. However, it makes the revenge part of it like get her Jade. Mama, this it's is, fierce. This is so delicious. It's so chump chump. I can't chomp, wait chomp, because chomp. it's you know what it's gonna do? It's, it's so gonna, violent. It's, it's gonna make it so that I don't have to go exact revenge in real life. I can get the nuggets through television. I, yeah, and I I was I've been fascinated by the Roma um since I was twelve. I started I tried to learn Romanian because of it. And um very hard language, by the way. And um, they don't even really speak actual Romanian, but it's it's a, such a fascinating group of uh, folks that kind of defy uh, ethnicity in a way, like they're they're a wandering nomadic kind of people. Sure. And and similar, like the Irish gypsies. Gypsies is not politically correct. No, no, no. It's not it's politically not. correct. Um, is it Romney? Sometimes isn't that a, okay? Okay, Romani. term. Romani. Yes, Romani. I learned that from that gypsy wedding dress show. Sure. Yes. Which is a great show. Uh, yeah. It's a fabulous show. Okay. I actually was, they did a, a Boston version and I was, um, I interviewed to, to be, um, on it, not as a, as a per, per person, a drag. They wanted a drag queen. Oh, uh, yeah. The it's wedding fierce. traditions within that community are Wild. spectacular. Yeah, it's kind of quinceanera ish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, the, um, what transpires next is that they, the, the ch the children and, um, adjacent to this field years later, start having visions in their nightmares about the scarecrow and the teeth. Love. And then some little boy digs up the teeth and is compelled to put them in his mouth and he chomps on his little brother. Love. We're going to leave it there. Thank okay. you for joining us yeah. this week. And next week we have a very, very, very special episode. So we'll see that. Dolly Parton is coming on. Yeah. We have Dolly Parton, Barack Obama, Julia Roberts. And Reg Park. And... Post Malone. Post Malone. He's doing base tattoos on the pod next week. Woo. Bye. Bye. <laughs>